Um, hi. All right, hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new here, my name is Nikki and this is my book nook. And what I have to talk to you about today, I just feel like it's gonna be something where half of you are gonna be like, yes, I get it, like, thank you, Nikki, I feel so seen, I totally know how your brain works, and the other half are gonna be like, what is wrong with you? And you know what, like, I understand that perspective, I'm prepared for it, because I know that, like, this just doesn't make any sense, but I would love to know, those of you that are watching, do you do this thing that I do where if you're really excited for a book, if it's a book, a TV show, whatever it might be, if it's something that is coming out and you've been waiting for it, you're so excited for it, you pre-order it, you get it the day of, it shows up, you know, the book, you hold it in your hands, you're like, yes, you hug it to your chest, you're so excited, then you put it on your bookshelf, proudly display it and um, proceed to let it rot there for the uh, foreseeable future because you just like are so excited about it that you kind of become almost anxious over it and then you just like get in the state where you just kind of can't let yourself read it and you're telling yourself you're saving it for a rainy day but then like the rainy day has come and you still are like I, I, I can't I can't I don't know like I'm just stressed for me particularly when it's like a series that I adore and let me just like say obviously you know from the title we're talking about the Magnolia Parks universe the Magnolia Parks series whatever you want to call it um this series is it, it has to be my favorite book series of all time like I have just never read anything like it I have spent hours honestly on this channel between this channel my Instagram and my TikTok just like raving about this series how much it means to me how I think that Jessa Hastings is an artist in this series is her masterpiece like I've said enough about it I've said so much about it I adore it and you would think with how much I talk about it that like I I'm caught up on the series obviously obviously whenever Daisy Hates the Great Undoing came out I immediately ripped it out of the Amazon package and I read it right there on the spot well you would be wrong because Something about this series is just so special to me and means so much to me and is just like something that it's like I love it so much that it scares me. Like I think of the day that this series is going to end and when I'm not going to have any more of it to read and it genuinely kind of brings me fear. It gives me this hole in my chest. So as I've been reading the series, I kind of like have waited for the next book in the series to come out before I've read the last book if that makes sense but now there's been some holdups because Jessa Hastings has gotten traditionally published so like the timelines are just a little longer so I did not read Magnolia Parks The Long Way Home until Daisy Hates The Great Undoing came out and then I got this book in the mail and that was back in December and it is now July it's like the last day of July about to be August and I have not yet read it because I've just like I don't want to be caught up it's like I want to be but I also don't it's I, I can't explain it but now as you might be able to tell because of this video title because we are here I'm gonna do it I'm gonna rip the band-aid off I just I need this I physically need this there's just been so much around Magnolia Parks in the last month or two you might have seen there was a whole kind of like scandal around the covers being changed they're being changed but they're not the originals are gonna be kept but they're also coming out with new ones. It was a whole thing. If you follow me on TikTok, you you probably were there for the many parts um, of a series that I made discussing that. But regardless, um, I've just been thinking about this series a lot. It's been bringing me back. I also have a few like friends that and just people that I follow that have been reading it recently, and it's just been giving me FOMO. It's just been making me like want to step back into this world so badly and I just want to be caught up and I'm at this point where it's like obviously I follow Magnolia Parks on all the social medias but I'm always kind of like very hesitantly scrolling past all their posts because I'm like I don't want to be spoiled for this book somehow I've managed to not be spoiled I really don't know anything about it regardless today is the day I'm starting the freaking book and I just thought it would be a great idea it would be a lot of fun if we could just go on this little journey together <laughs> if I could read this book jump in whenever I want give you guys my thoughts I don't know what it's going to consist of honestly because like when I start to read these books I just get so immersed in them I just like my head is down I can't stop reading them so I'm like will I read the whole thing and not update you at all maybe I guess we'll find out I'm gonna try my best but I just I need to get started on this like I've made the decision now now that I like ripped off the band-aid and I'm like I'm gonna read it I'm gonna do it I have to start right this second so that is what I'm gonna do hello 
Future Nikki here. I just wanted to pop in real quick because I realized I didn't say this in my intro. This video is going to be chock full of spoilers. I'm not holding anything back like I've said before in all my reading vlogs. I want to go on this journey with you guys, talk about it with you guys, give all of my unfiltered thoughts, reactions, whatever. So if you haven't yet read this book, if you are looking for something spoiler free to get you excited about it, this is not the video. Please come back after you've read it and I would love to have a little book club moment with you. I'm so excited to get back to Daisy, to get back to Julian Hayes. He's my favorite character in this entire series. Literally my boyfriend, my husband, my little baby. I just love him. He deserves the world. And we got, you know, we left off in a very interesting place in the last Daisy Hates book with Daisy and Julian kind of going their separate ways. We know that like Julian and Magnolia Parks have this kind of like weird tumultuous like back and forth of like wanting each other but not admitting it and her obviously having her whole thing with BJ. And so I don't even know like where in the timeline this story picks up. I don't know if part of it takes place over the course of Magnolia Parks' The Long Way Home or if it starts directly after. Like I don't know. I don't know. And Jessa Hastings just has such a beautiful way of like crafting the timelines of these books and the way they weave together and how the stories make sense and just fit and how the characters fit and how the like Daisy Hates world of like the crime and whatnot and the Magnolia Parks world of just like the luxury, the you know, high society, Holland Park versus the compound, whatever, like how they are separate but they're also so together and how the friend groups weave together. It's just everything to me, so I'm just very excited to return to it. And after this uh, six minute intro, I'm going to do that. So I'm diving in, I will let you guys know what I have thoughts. I'm so ready to get started. Well, I am not shocked in the slightest to inform you that I sat down on this couch and in one sitting just flew through 100 pages of this book, wasn't even paying attention to where I was, looked down and was like, oh my God, I'm on chapter 18. I was just immediately sucked back in. I feel like it's been, God, I guess at least eight, nine months or something like that since I last read one of the books in the series, Magnolia Park's Long Way Home. And it's like, I never stopped. It's like, I just picked it right back up, the entire friend group, all of it. It's just so epic. Like, I can't even explain. It feels like coming home, like not to be dramatic, but like it feels like this is my friend group, like I'm in it. And just the way that Jessa Hastings writes, like I've always said this, it's like you're having a conversation. It's like, you know, Daisy is in your ear, like telling you like, this is what's been going on. This is what I've been thinking. And Christian and BJ and Magnolia and Julian and whoever you are getting their perspective. It is like, you are the little like angel or devil, however you want to see it on their shoulder. And they're just like whispering all the things that they're thinking in your ear. And I just like, there's nothing like it. There's no other book or series like this. And I just adore it. But to kind of catch up on like where we're at and what's going on. Um, so this book definitely does take place in the same timeline as Magnolia Park's The Long Way Home. I've figured that out, I've gleaned that because uh, when you get Christian's perspective, he's hanging out with BJ and they're talking about how Magnolia is about to come home um, and be there for her dad's wedding. So that is the beginning of Magnolia Park's three, so we know that's where we're at in the timeline. Um, a lot has happened. Uh, you know at the end of the last Magnolia Parks book that you know Daisy and Christian and Julian, just kind of Daisy and basically her entire world had this like major falling out. She wants to be a normal person. She wants out of it. Julian crossed a line that she doesn't feel like he can come back from. She just is so angry at him. So she wants to go be a normal person. And we learn now that she has been dating Tiller, uh, Killian Tiller, who is uh, this cop that's kind of been on <laughs> Julian's case for years now. And it's kind of like a sticky situation, obviously, because he's supposed to be like trying to arrest uh, Julian and her entire family, but he's over here uh, dating Daisy, shagging Daisy, however you want to say it. Um, they've been dating for like eight-ish, nine-ish months now and they are very much in love. And honestly, I love Tiller. Like from the first time we met him, I was just so intrigued by him. I love the like scandalousness, the forbiddenness of them being together. And this is another thing that Jessa Hastings does so well. And I don't know how she manages to do it because for me, anytime I read a book where there's any type of like love triangle, multiple characters, multiple like men that a girl is involved with. I am always like hardcore this person's team. Like I always 
want one particular person to like be with them in the end and it's like I do have my teams in this book for sure like I've said a million times like Julian is my favorite character um I freaking adore Christian so much like I just love the Daisy Hates books because like really getting to see Christian's perspective and get inside his head he's just everything and like his chemistry with Daisy is everything their whole like acting like they don't care about each other but they're so deeply madly you know have just stumbled into love with each other i i definitely like want her with christian of course like that that's what i want romeo i i never really cared for um but it's like you know her and romeo have their moments they have all this history and so you see these moments between them where you're just like oh your heart like aches and then you see her and tiller and tiller is like such a freaking sweetheart he's like risking his job and everything he's worked for to be with her so like I just love Tiller, but then it's like Christian is everything to me, but it's like I can just like sit back with this book and with this series and I feel like I'm just sitting here like eating popcorn, just enjoying all of it, like enjoying all the drama. I'm like, however this goes, I'm gonna be entertained and I'm gonna be here for it and I just love it. So she's been with Tiller. Christian has been off um, dating this other girl. Um, just not it's just a distraction he doesn't care about her he's never stopped being in love with daisy uh he's been very much involved with julian in the background he had to really help julian get out of some uh you know deep doo-doo that he was in <laughs> at the end of the last book um had to help him kind of clear his name had to help him find this particular paint painting so Christian and Julian have kind of grown a lot closer and I've been working more closely together and I think it kind of gives Christian a way to feel like he's closer to Daisy even though he's like not closer to Daisy like not around her so they've been together it's like Romeo Christian and Julian are all over here like missing Daisy so much but actually like they're not um but now like the whole big thing of what's been going on is that somebody is clearly out to get Daisy which is something that I kind of expected like now that I'm kind of flashing back to the last book whenever she decided she was gonna like cut herself off from this life it's like you know how this goes like it's never that easy like there you just you make a lot of enemies when you live the kind of lifestyle that these characters live so there's always gonna be people like Daisy's always gonna have to watch her back so she's been able to for the last you know nearly a year now has been able to live a somewhat normal life in her own apartment with Tiller just dating him going to medical school like she's been working in a hospital living her life but now um somebody's clearly out to get her they've been sending her flowers and most recently they sent um they had someone put flowers in her locker at the hospital some daisies and then somebody left daisies on her and Tiller's front porch that were like chopped up and like made into mulch and so it's clearly a threat and um Julian even though he like hates Daisy is so mad at her has obviously been having people you know trailing her the entire time they've been apart from one another and uh Romeo was trailing her and someone basically uh tried to like kill her tried to kill her ended up accidentally shooting the girl from her hospital that she was walking with so now Everybody is back under one roof. Uh, Daisy and Tiller <laughs> are living back in the compound again because they need to protect her. Tiller knows Daisy doesn't want to be there, but he's like, no one can protect you like Julian can. Like, he has to admit that. So that is going to create for some complications because obviously Julian's there now. They're trying to figure their stuff out, Daisy and Julian, and then Christian's going to be around all the time. Romeo's there all the time. Tiller's under the same roof. It's just a lot happening, but um, very here for it. Very interested to see where it goes. And then like, as always, you have like this main story going on, but you also are seeing some scenes that you saw in Magnolia Park. So I just always love seeing Magnolia from everyone else's perspectives. I think it's so interesting. Like Julian, I just, he's so charming. Like he's such a little shit. Like, I don't know how else to, like talk about him he's just like such a badass you know he's over here total like you know criminal obviously but i just am like i would do literally anything you asked me <laughs> like his back and forth with magnolia he's just so smooth like everything he says i just love it so i'm very interested to see like his inner thoughts and see the whole stuff with magnolia kind of play out in the story and see where it goes and see who's after daisy and what the deal is with all that so lots to come um 
Also the whole like Tara, Henry, Jonah situation, that whole love triangle, there's a lot going on in that and it was very much hinted at in Magnolia Park. So I, I don't know if we'll get to see more of that in this book or maybe that's gonna be more the next Magnolia Parks book, but it's already been talked about, brought up like several times throughout this. So we shall see. But um, obviously, if you haven't figured it out yet, um, I'm loving it. I'm so happy I decided to read this. This is really what I needed. I've kind of been, I very much have been in a reading slump the last couple of months, honestly. Like I've been reading books, but I haven't felt like I've been like, super there i feel like i've been like going through the motions a little bit i don't feel like i've read anything that's really just like captured my interest and had me sitting there flying through a book you know flying through 100 pages especially anything involving romance like it's just not um it's just not really been my thing recently but you know magnolia parks is not just romance it's literally there's nothing like it there's nothing like it so i love it i'm gonna keep on going and i will check back in with you guys when I got more to report. The way that I am having to refrain from kicking my feet and giggling in front of all of you people right now, I love this book. Like I think, I don't wanna call it this early cause I'm on page 235, chapter 35. Um, I like don't wanna call it this early, but I think that this is going to be my favorite book in this series kind of easily. I. I'm devouring this. I am eating this up. I am so obsessed with it. Everything that is happening, like I just had to, I had to take a breather. I had to stop because we, we just need to discuss. Um, first of all, I just have to talk about Julian again, first of all, because like my favorite book character possibly like ever at this stage, like I am just so obsessed with this man everything about him he is such a complex character in the way that he is like this criminal he is such a badass he literally kills people without blinking an eye yet he has such deep emotions deep feelings deep, deep attachments to his sister and to magnolia parks and it's like i absolutely eat up any fictional man that is like just ruthless but has a soft spot for just one or two girls i i just love it i feel like julian is like the branch between these two worlds i mean obviously you have christian you have jonah but like something about julian is just different the way that he is daisy's brother he kind of leads this whole operation at the compound but then he also like is in magnolia's back pocket over here it's just it's so painful in a way reading you know him and magnolia's story again especially like having read the last book knowing where they end up and i can't remember if i said this before so forgive me if i'm repeating myself but it's just hard because it's like i'm here for it any julian content i love but him and magnolia's story just hurts me because he he has this thing for her something about her like he just can't get her out of his head. He just, the way that he describes her and compares her to art, which is obviously kind of like his greatest love, the thing that he cherishes, values the most, whatever. I I could read a million more internal monologues of him comparing her to art. I'm just obsessed with it. Um, but it's just like, she will never love him that way. It is always gonna be VJ, and I don't want them together in any way. Like he deserves so much better than her like she is not going to give him what what he needs what he deserves but um i just i love seeing him have this conflict of like it, it's kind of similar to daisy and christian's situation where they try to act like they don't have feelings for each other they try to act like what what they are is not anything serious and you know we don't fight we don't get jealous we're not a we we don't date we don't we don't go on dates we don't go to brunch like that's not what we are but it's like deep down you know that's exactly what they are and what they always will be as much as they try to deny it like you're obsessed with each other just say it and it's so hard for me because i know and like i can tell like magnolia feels things for julian as well like she does she it's and it's so funny like her ignorance and her naivety of the whole situation and i love seeing the scene of like her and daisy on the floor drinking wine and her being like he's not an art thief like he couldn't hurt a fly like why do you need protection like what are you talking about? Like, I just, it's so funny how she's so clueless, yet she's so confident and thinks that she knows everything. And seeing that whole scene that I vividly remember in um, Magnolia Park's The Long Way Home, where Magnolia um, and Julian, I think it's at his New Year's party, 
it's at, it's a party where they show up together and she's there to make, you know, BJ jealous, but then Julian, it was so interesting to see that from his perspective this time because in Magnolia Parks, you just see Magnolia talking to BJ and then turning around and seeing Julian like with another girl and her on his lap and in my mind, I'm like, oh, that's just Julian, you know, like, even if he likes Magnolia, I guess he's gonna, you know, be messing around with other girls, that's just who he is, but then seeing it from his perspective, in this book, you see that he actually saw her with BJ, and, like, it pissed him off, like, it made him jealous, and Julian Hates does not get jealous, but something in him was like, I want to make her jealous i want to make her feel what i just felt so him like intentionally messing with that girl to get a rise out of magnolia and it working and her response to it like magnolia is just such an interesting character it's like there are things about her that drive me crazy but at the end of the day she's just a badass like she has such confidence in herself and she knows everybody in the room wants her and like she's going to take full advantage of that and honestly power to her for it um it's fantastic and i just I don't know, I love, I love Julian and just seeing more of him, seeing more of him in this story and reliving all of this and I think we're really gonna see how, how much the Magnolia situation affected him because we don't really, we don't get to see that from his point of view in the last book so now it's just, it's so interesting. I feel like there's not a lot of other books where genuinely like, I enjoy seeing the exact same story from a different perspective. Like I usually just feel like it's really repetitive, but Jessa has such a way of like making each character so unique and they all have just like their own particular thoughts and it just, it feels like an entirely different story seeing it through different eyes and from a different perspective and like the little pieces that you see and the things that you miss and like, again, like seeing the other characters' reactions, like when you get Magnolia's perspective all the time, but then you get to see how other people see her. It's just fascinating. I love it. And it's just so interesting, like seeing the timeline kind of match up and seeing other scenes and how they fit in with what was happening in The Long Way Home. I just, all of it, incredible. And um, now we obviously have to talk about kind of like the star of this, this show in reality, Daisy and Christian and their whole situation. Um, oh my God. They are just, so frustrating just the drama it's so hard because I really I I liked Tiller I liked Tiller a lot in Daisy Hates and I was honestly here for her like him and Daisy having a thing but in this book he just they're not meant to be it's not gonna work and he's just really been pissing me off because it's like he's he's obviously intrigued by her he he likes her he's he very much feels things for her he's been coming around he's been interested in her for a long time but now that he has her and is fully aware of who she is what she comes from now he's like not okay with it and now he wants to change her and now he wants to change like who she is and how she feels about her own family and wants her to like sell out her own family and it's like dude you knew what you were signing up for like initially I was kind of giving him the benefit of the doubt and I'm like look I understand like this dilemma like this moral dilemma of you feeling like I'm a cop like I I have some you know uh, I owe some loyalty to like my job and I need to like be aware of what's going on here and certain things I can't let slide but then it just gets so like petty and it gets to a point where you know, he wants her to literally go against her brother and he keeps telling her like, he's a criminal. It's like, he's my brother and you know that. Like, you knew that when you got into this. And I think because Daisy separated herself from that world, like Tiller thought that, you know, she was gonna separate from it forever and that he would get to have her in this little bubble. But obviously that's just like not how this is gonna work. And um, that was a very harsh reality for him. So this whole scene that just went down where Daisy tried to go and visit him at work because she's been, he's been avoiding her. Um, and he kind of over, overhears, she kind of overhears him talking to his coworker who is also his ex-girlfriend about her and about, you know, how he should just break up with her already and how, she, you know, he's been avoiding her and working extra hours and taking extra cases and staying late at the bar and whatever. And she's like, oh, hell no. Like you do not you are not gonna play me, sir. So the way that he, she calls Christian up and is like, we're gonna go to this bar that he's gonna be at. Um, you're gonna kiss me in front of him and we're gonna cause a whole scene, guns a blazing, literally. Um, so here for that. Like Daisy is just everything to me. She's not gonna go down without a fight. She's not gonna let you humiliate her. And I mean, it hurt, like in a way I was just like, oh, Tiller, I really did like you, but I mean, it's Christian all the way and it's about time we get there. But of course it's never gonna be 
that easy. I feel like we're gonna have to kind of like ease into it. Um, they kind of tried to deny each other for a second, or at least Christian did. He's like, you literally just broke up with your boyfriend. She's like, and? Um, and the whole big epic, where he, like, epic moment where he pushes her up against the car and like kisses her or whatever. I'm just like, thank God. <laughs> waiting for it because it's just so frustrating because he's just so in love with her and she is so in love with him yet they've just like messed everything up and like the timing has never been right but now it's right so like be happy so yeah that's kind of like where I just left off um so interested to see what happens in the rest of the story and like where this book is going to finish off because I genuinely have no idea because I mean, it's been a minute, but when I finished Magnolia Park's The Long Way Home, I feel like the end of it was really just focused on Magnolia and BJ and them like, you know, getting engaged, their whole thing, the whole, like her accident, the whole thing with Bridget, like Julian, after they kind of went their separate ways and had the whole moment of, which I'm gonna scream when it happens, the whole moment of like, I reckon in another lifetime I could have loved you. And then the, I reckon I would have let you love me. Like that scene, when that comes up again and we see that from Julian's perspective, I'm probably gonna crack in half because it killed me, uh, I love it, and I just, mm, it's gonna hurt. But um, I feel like after that moment in The Long Way Home, we don't really see much more of Julian, if any at all, so yeah. Interested to see what happens with that. I also feel like we've kinda gone off the rails of like the whole who who is after Daisy. I think we've kinda gotten away from that a little bit, so I'm sure that will come back up, and also, um, someone was trying to scam Julian, Daisy caught it, they were trying to get him to go get this painting and she's like, that painting is a fake. Um, someone else, like Tara, has her dad has that in his office, that's not a real painting. So there's obviously something going on. So um, yeah, we're gonna see what happens. But um, I love it, like have I said that enough? I freaking love this book and I'm having so much fun and I'm getting stressed out because I'm just flying through it and I'm going to uh, realize that fear that I talked to you guys about at the beginning of this video where I have purposely not read this book because I am going to be so depressed when I don't have more to read and when I'm caught up on the series and I just, there's nothing like it. I feel like I'm gonna have to go back and like restart the whole series over again, which I may very well do. We will see, I don't know, but um, I'm gonna stop talking because I need to keep going, so. We'll check in with you guys in a bit. Hmm. Oh, oh hi, I didn't see you there. What, oh, this little number? Oh, it's it's nothing, I'm just, it's just my boyfriend's sweatshirt, I'm just borrowing it, Um, you know, no big deal. Um, Full disclosure, <laughs> um, I definitely, live in Texas and it is definitely 104 degrees outside today, but I had to bust this out from uh, last winter's clothes in the top shelf of my closet because that's just like where we are. Um, I, I'm just, I, I'm back, I'm obsessed. I am hyper fixating in a way I can't explain. I had to work today as people do. And um, I, I thought of nothing but this book all day. So I am going to finish it now. Um, I'm gonna have my little late night reading sesh. I have a little over 100 pages left in it. But I just have to like emphasize once again how much I love Julian Hates. I think it is so funny because reading The Long Way Home you see all these scenes between Julian and Magnolia that you're seeing once again, obviously, like I keep talking about, but I just, I remember the scenes between them where Julian is like talking to Magnolia and he's asking her about like love and what it feels like to be in love and what it feels like for her and BJ to be as in love with each other as they are. And you know, she goes through these like beautiful monologues where she explains how it feels and what it's like. And the whole time you're seeing Julian kind of like nod along and you always could tell that like Julian obviously has a soft spot for Parks. Like you see that from literally the very first book back in Magnolia Parks whenever she's like at that club and that like shooting happens at that other club that Julian is at and he like texts her to see if she's okay. Like it's hinted at from so early on that he has a weird little soft spot for her. Like whenever she goes over to his place the first time because she's like trying to get over BJ and they like, 
start to hook up, but then she starts crying and he makes her like pancakes and shit. Like you can tell Julian's got a soft spot for this girl. That is no secret, but the way that I kind of always interpreted those conversations because you're just getting them from Magnolia's point of view is it seems like Julian is, you know, into her, but like he can't, like he can't quite comprehend the love that she's talking about. Like he's genuinely asking like, what's that like? Because he just knows that that's not something that he's capable of and that's not something that he wants and that he's a no strings attached kind of person. Again, you know, he cares about her, he likes her, he enjoys spending time with her, but that's just not something that he can relate to is the way that, you know, I saw it and the way I feel you're supposed to see it in The Long Way Home, but now revisiting those scenes again, from Julian's perspective, like you've seen him all cool, like cool as a cucumber being like, hmm, so yeah, what's love like? Hmm, yeah, well like we don't, we don't do that. You know, we're not, we're not saying there's, there's no we. So interesting. Okay. Um, but then like you're reading it now from his perspective and you just know inside of his head, he's asking because he knows that he feels that way. Like he knows that he loves her and he needs to hear these words from her to like, I think he's he's asking in hopes that like she'll say something that is not the way that he's feeling. Like he wants he wants someone to, you know, get him to believe that he's not feeling this way and he's just crazy and he's just going through it, but he's like, nope, as she's sitting here explaining her undying love for BJ, that is how I feel about her. And I am so completely and utterly fucked. And I'm just like, oh my god, it hurts. It hurts. Like Deep in my heart, it hurts, because obviously I know where this is gonna lead, at least at the end of this book as far as their relationship, so it's so hard. I mean, like Magnolia and BJ have to be in-game. I don't see a world in which they're not in-game. Like, it's so emphasized that they were made for each other and it's always gonna be each other, and I just think there's no possible way this series is set up for them to not end up together. You know, we got a few more books to go, but No, I'm like, what happens to Julian? Like, I swear to God, Jessa, Jessa, because we're on a first name basis. If you kill this man off, I, I won't survive. I also feel like at this point in the series, though, I don't think I want like a new character introduced. You know what I mean? Like, I want, like, I have so much love for him that I've built up. Like, this man, he has to be my all-time book boyfriend. Like. I said that about a few people in my life but when I really sit here and think about I mean Edward Cullen obviously <laughs> but I'm like Edward Cullen Will Grayson the third from the Devil's Night series but like Julian hates bro Julian hates bro the wicked witch of the east like Julian hates I I cannot fathom how obsessed I am with him I think I low-key had a dream about him last night and I'm not joking like, I think it started as a little, like, daydream, blah, 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 and then I fell asleep, and then I think it, like, continued as I was sleeping. Um, this reading vlog is so manic, but, okay, I want to show you guys a couple of pictures of this guy that I've seen so many people fan cast him as Julian. Like, I see him on Pinterest and stuff when I look up Julian or Daisy Hates or whatever, and it's so accurate to me. Like, I don't know if this is how you guys visualize Julian, but, like, the first time I ever saw this man, my jaw hit the floor. I was just like, that, that is him. That is him. And I, I yes, yes. Where do I sign? <laughs> Where do I get one? Can it be shipped to me? Is it on Amazon Prime? Like, I would just love to know. But, um, yeah, I'm sitting here rambling because honestly, like, I'm kind of stressed, kind of stressed to finish this book. I don't know what's going to happen because I'm not even, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm doing a disservice to like, or I'm not doing uh, Christian and Daisy's relationship justice because of how much I'm talking about Julian. I'm just so obsessed with him, but like, I am also so obsessed with Christian and I'm obsessed with Christian and Daisy. They are just such a vibe, like their whole relationship, just everything with them I'm obsessed with, but I feel like obviously something's going to go to shit. Something, something's going to mess up. Christian's gonna mess up. He's gonna anger me. He's gonna anger Daisy. Like I just I don't see them coming out of this book like happily together And I want to know what happened with like Bridget if that's something that we get any sort of glimpse into like the whole crap Like the car crash Magnolia has whatever like I don't know if 
like I don't know I don't know if that's a part of this or what or how this ends but uh, I'm gonna stop procrastinating and just read it and then I will come back to you guys once I finish and we'll have a final little little powwow I I'm stressed <laughs> hi I'm not done yet I just um, I can't wait I a couple of things first of all literally two seconds after I stopped filming the last clip and started reading again I put two and two together that okay Julian and Daisy's aunt Roysen, I think is her name, Roysen. She is totally, she is totally responsible for Magnolia's car crash. That's, that's what that link has to be. That has to be the connection. She totally was like threatening her, being like, oh, you got yourself a cute little girlfriend because they're mad because Daisy killed that guy to save Tiller. So that all makes sense now. And now I'm stressed, but I, I know what's coming sort of. So I'm gonna see that play out, but the reason we are gathered here right now is because I just like feel like I need to fucking die. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna die right here and just like crawl up in a ball. Um, so I have done everything in my power to avoid spoilers of this book. Like anytime I see a post related to it, I do not read the caption, I kind of scroll past. Um, but one quote that I have seen that I'm like, okay, that's a part of the book was the quote about the title, right? The Great Undoing. I have seen the quote that says like, it is the great undoing of my heart as I know it. It's the great undoing of my heart as I know it. I have just like seen that quote in little like Instagram pictures and stuff before. And I'm like, okay, that's not that much of a spoiler, whatever, like it's a quote from the book. It's where the title comes from. Fine. <sighs> little old silly me was like, okay, this is like, it's a Daisy quote, right? It's the Daisy Hates book. Daisy hates the great undoing. It is her great undoing. It's not, oh my God, it's Julian. It's from his perspective. Magnolia Parks is Julian hates great undoing. I have never gasped such a gasp, like the gasp I just gasped. <laughs> I, he's so, in love with her and it's gonna kill me it's going to kill me I would like to get this book tattooed on my face is that a poor decision like the entirety of it all the text do you think it would fit <laughs> okay I need to keep going but I simply like I couldn't get past that I couldn't just like go on to the next chapter and act like I want to just like read that entire little Am I a narrator? Am I a narrator right now? This entire little thing. Fuck. I hate loving her. It's the great undoing of my heart as I know it. She's made herself at home, kicked up those fucking cerulean heels, put her feet up on my left rib. Over the mantelpiece, she hung her own portrait up herself. That little minx. Best painting I've ever seen too. Better than any woman anyone has ever painted in the history of time. A face I'd win battles for. A face I'd lose anything for. Even her. <sighs> Deep breaths, deep breaths. Um, Jessa Hastings, like, like where does she get these words from? Like where does she produce these sentences? Like I just, she is a poet. Like she is an artist and I don't like say this to be annoying, but it, I'm not like that easily impressed. Do you know what I mean? It's like I've read, a lot of books <laughs> okay I've read a lot of books I have a lot of books that I love and you know I I've, I've read a lot of quotes in my day that really made me like huh like okay like that's that's a good quote like I have quotes that stand out but in every one of these books there are like dozens of quotes that I read them and I'm like fuck that was beautiful <laughs> like I might get one of those every five or six books that I read that's pushing it. I feel like one every 10 to 15 books I read, I might get to a quote where I'm like, damn, like that really made me feel something. But they're on like every other page in this book, like every chapter. She puts a quote that just makes me like sit there and I have to reread it five times. And I'm like, what is this? <laughs> what is it? I don't know. Um, okay, I'm actually gonna finish now. No promises, but um, how long is this video? I don't know, but it's been a good time. I hope you're having a good time. I'm... 
I finished and now I remember why it was that I have been putting off reading this book for so long because I knew I knew this was gonna happen to me I the people that have just read this series straight through are you okay like that's just what I need to ask because the gaping hole I feel in my heart right now that I'm like not even trying to be dramatic because normally when people are like oh my god the book ended like I have to wait for the next one mm, I'm so sad like I always think they're being dramatic it's like sis you'll be fine like the next one will come out you know you're gonna obsess over it for a couple days but then like you'll kind of forget about it and by the time it comes out it'll feel like no time has passed it's fine relax this is this is different this literally feels like this is my friend group it feels like it is my friends and they have just all been through some crazy shit and i love them all so much with my entire heart and it's like now all communication with them is cut off and i don't know how they are i don't know where they are i don't know what they're doing and i don't even know when i'm gonna find out what happens next and um I just, I, th there's there's nothing like this series. I just feel like I have no words left to say to explain how much I love it and how incredible it is and how much of like an intricate masterpiece it is. And I cannot even fathom, I can't fathom how Jessa Hastings like has crafted this series, planned it, outlined it, whatever she had to do, because obviously she had to do that because just the way that everything just, intertwines and the way that it builds and the way that sh there's certain scenes that repeat but then there's scenes that are new and you have to know how those fit in with the timeline and characters grow and you see the different perspectives and you see scenes differently and it totally changes the way you see it based on the perspective that you're seeing it from and like she has it so masterfully planned out so that you just have this experience reading it that is like nothing nothing else on this planet like I don't I don't know what else to say about it. I'm like, how did you even come up with this? It's just, I don't know. Uh, every single scene between Julian and Magnolia, I kind of, like, I forgot how many scenes there were. I feel like earlier I kind of was like, okay, I think they kind of break up and that's it. Like, I, I had kind of forgotten how many other scenes there were between them kind of after they kind of went their separate ways, whatever. Like the whole scene where Julian, we now know from this perspective, like self-sabotages and like hooks up with that girl with the intention of Magnolia seeing so that BJ will fight for her because he wants her to be safe. Like he cares more about her than he cares about himself and like his happiness. Like he wants her to be safe. So he gives her up and he lets her go and it's like literally killing him and he lets her go and then Magnolia and BJ are so freaking stupid and frustrating and annoying that like he lets her go and then they aren't even together and whenever he just like storms over to her and is like what are y'all doing like I did not I did not give this up for y'all to be friends for y'all to figure it out like what is there to figure out why are you not together you deserve better and like I remember that scene and like loving Julian in that scene before but now knowing like the pain behind it and the like I literally love you and I let you go and you're still not happy and the way that it's killing him is so it just it's so heart-wrenching it's so heart-wrenching and then Daisy and Christian just like cannot freaking be happy for more than five minutes and now we do know that Magnolia's crash was not an accident it was a hit out on her and seeing that all come together and seeing Julian figuring it out and trying to stop it but not being able to stop it and like seeing that point of view of it not realizing that he was there the first time it's just like my brain kind of exploded a little bit and now them having to like flee the country and Julian just being so distraught and fucked up and feeling like <laughs> just him saying that like Magnolia got hurt because I love her like because I love her I don't even know if she's alive now like this is what I get for like this is why people like me are not allowed to feel things for people and he just has so much like blame on himself and it's like he didn't do anything wrong and it's 
Oh, it's so sad. I don't know. I so it's like where are they gonna go? Where like how is everyone gonna come back together? Um, you know, they didn't mention anything about Bridget in this, so I think there's still more to come with like what really happened with that and where she is and how everything lined up. And you know, it is funny. It's like sorry, random going back to Julian and Magnolia as I have to. Um, it's funny because you know from the long way home, like, Magnolia and BJ are having this whole, like, tumultuous relationship the entire time her and Julian are having their relationship. So, it's so weird having that in the back of my mind of, like, knowing all of those scenes between them, between her hanging out with him and spending, like, days at a time at Julian's place and going out with him and going to all these events with him. She's, like, so in love with BJ in the background and that kind of just, like, makes me so mad at her because I'm just like, this man is so in love with you, but... God, I don't know, but I do love Magnolia. I just, she's so funny. I just love that she is so herself and so un like unapologetic about it and just so confident and like literally doesn't give a shit. Like she's gonna walk into this room full of gang lords and be like, I'm gonna style all of you. What are your measurements? I'm gonna go shopping real quick, be right back. And it's just like, they're like laughing at her and like, what is wrong with you? And she just doesn't care. Like she's so herself and the way she stood up for Christian and released the full tape that Vanna, you know leaked and just all of that she's such a like badass you have to like love her she's so different from daisy but you have to love her and i just i love daisy as well i i love them both so much i love how different their characters are and i kind of love how when the series starts out you almost think that the two of them are going to be like enemies or something and they're like supposed to be polar opposite and i remember when i started the first daisy hates i was like this is kind of odd. Like, why Why are we learning about her now? Like, how do these stories connect? Like, it felt very kind of disjointed and odd to me, like, when I initially started it. But now, just, like, seeing the two of them are, like, friends now and just the connection and how the groups have really come together and how it just continues to build and how these two girls are so different. Again, I'm like, how did you come up with this concept, Jessa, of, like, I'm going to focus on this group and it's, like, you know, two different people from two very different worlds, but also the same world and how it intertwines and interconnects. It's just so, so good. And again, I could sit here and ramble for the rest of the evening, even though it is like one in the morning right now. Um, but I will not do that. Um, I just want to say, anybody that watched this entire video that is still here, still listening to me ramble, um, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this experience. Um, I certainly did. I'm honestly so, <laughs> I'm so interested to go back and watch all these clips as I like put them together to just relive the book once again. Cause um, I just, I need more, <laughs> I need more so badly. And um, yeah guys, I, I have no more words. I literally just need to like sit here on my couch and stare at the ceiling and process and that is all. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you very soon.